Hello and a warm welcome to another edition of To The Point. Several writers, artists, historians and filmmakers have returned their awards citing vicious assault on the freedom of expression as the main reason. There is a scenario of a cultural polarization in the country which has never been seen before. And what does this mean for the political system of the country? Joining me now is a personality who himself returned his Sahitya Academy Award. He's a, he's a poet, he's a writer, a literary critic and a former bureaucrat. I welcome Ashok Vajpai on To The Point. Thank you. Mr. Vajpai, let me begin by asking you, what was the main reason why you returned your award? Well, the reasons were two or three. One, many of us, writers, artists, etc., in various parts of the country, are feeling that there is a growing trend of intolerance, hatred, trying to uh, abolish or demolish the other. And it so happened that this three of these scholars were killed. One of them also a writer. Two of them were uh, rationalist intellectuals. And they were all killed in broad daylight and nothing happened. Right. In the sense that even now, so many months, years have passed and nobody has been apprehended. But Mr. Vajpai, when several artists, historians, you know, join the bandwagon, it, it really forces you to think that does this move have a political agenda which should be subject to the public scrutiny? Do you believe this so? Well, we have, we belong to all kinds of political formations. I mean, the writers, for instance, about 42 and odd, have returned the Sahitya Academy Award. None of them spoke to each other. In fact, most of them don't even know each other personally. I don't know most of them, but I think five or six. So they, this is all spontaneous. And since they come from many languages, from many locations, obvious that the discomfort with what is happening, that some kind of an agitation and anxiety for what is happening was widespread among the creative community. Right. Now, this is to oppose the politics of intolerance, the politics of religious um, tensions, the politics of communal disharmony, the politics in, in which being the other or being in a minority of whatever, not necessarily of religion or faith, but also of opinion, of but viewpoint. Mr. Vajpai, what I need to understand from you is that we know when so many people are there in the crowd, artists, writers, historians, filmmakers, uh, how does one, a person like me, who's a layman, uh, as compared to you, would, would I really, I'm forced to think that amongst this crowd of people, who is a genuine literature and who is a political literature? Because every writer or a historian does have political leanings. Well, not How do necessarily. I just from the wheat and the shaft? No, no, not necessarily. Uh, this will be generalizing or simplifying the situation, which is far too complex. Okay. Well, writers and artists do have political opinions, but they do not necessarily belong to a political formation. Okay. When politics is interfering in this country, in almost every sphere, from religion to eating to dreaming to thinking to speaking, if writers and artists intervene in politics, right. you must give them this opportunity. But Mr. Uh, Mr. Vajpayee, what you're saying is intervening, of course, is, is, is okay. But you know, the timing of the whole thing has been under question because Bihar elections are on the corner and you know, uh, I would, maybe we'll, we'll just go by examples by examples, taking the first case of Nayantara Segal. Now, how she's perceived as? She's perceived as Jawaharlal Nehru's niece, who uh, got an award uh, during Rajiv Gandhi's tenure. Then uh, she didn't speak during the 1984 riots, but suddenly she after... She did, incidentally. Many of these people who are being accused of having kept quiet during emergency... But all of a sudden she returns her award after that. No, no, no. But why all of a sudden? You see, there is a series of protests that many of us have been lodging. We are choosing the form of protest. Okay. That's, that's about all. Otherwise, writers, intellectuals, historians, etc. had uh, uh, sort of raised uh, objection to emergency. Some of them got into the jail. During the 1984 riots also, during Nandi Gram, which was perpetrated by the CPM government uh, at that time in West Bengal, during the Gujarat riots. But it wasn't so palpable as it is, it no, is now. It is not so vocal. No, because the means of 
Okay, the medium. Uh, medium which has, has used. increased. At this time, this this will be a, uh, almost a non-phenomena, and now it becomes a phenomena. So it's another matter. But you see, the point is, forget about the timing. Mm -hmm. Forget about we, none of us is concerned with what's happening in Bihar or whatever. The point of the matter is that here is a person who's killed on the rumors that he had a piece of beef, right. and. and a minister goes and says this is merely an accident. He's lynched by a crowd and now the investigations reveal that it, it was no piece of beef either. But as Arun Jaitley posted on his uh, uh, blog post on the Facebook, he said that it's a manufactured rebellion, it's a paper rebellion, it's, it's, there is, this group is resorting to politics by other means. And of course the two incidents which you're stating of course, Dadri and Kalburgi's murder, they are, they are a law and order uh, situation well, which has not, to be attributed merely, to the state. If, if it's merely a law and order situation, why should there be this discontent? Why should there be such widespread? You know, 500 and odd scientists have joined in. Right. The President of India has made a statement thrice. The Governor of the Reserve Bank has made the same comments and a top industrialists like Narayan Murthy has said the same thing. So how are you saying all these are manufactured? I mean, Mr. Jaitley should think it twice before making such an irresponsible statement. He should have addressed the issue. But, but now uh, some kind of a damage control seems to be coming from the government side where yesterday we heard uh, Home Minister Rajnath Singh saying that he's keen to meet the writers and the artists. If supposing he offers you a solution with the writers uh, give back, I mean, take their awards, awards back or uh, do you find a solution to the, to the problem, the current crisis? You see, we have raised the issue in the public domain okay. and we want the government to act in the public domain. Okay. As for meeting and all that, that can happen. But first we should know what is the position of the government. The, the, what we have been insisting upon all these days is that we have a prime minister who speaks on all kinds of issues, big and trivial, he doesn't find this discontent, this, this uh, growing anxiety worth addressing. But Mr. Vajpayee, from what you're saying, that you know, it, it, it's a very symbolic kind of a protest which has been staged by the writers. Rajanath Singh has, has done the damage control by saying that yes, he's ready to meet. You of course are saying that no, that, that apology or whatever has to be offered in the public domain if it if at all has to come. Uh, it looks like a spectre, which, and who's going to blink first? Is the writers or the government? Uh, well, I, I, I don't see. You see, in the first place, we are not addressing the government primarily. Okay. The writers... No, but if you're not addressing the government, you're talking about an ideological intolerance. As huh. what Arun Jaitley has also said, there is, it's perceived as a case of ideological intolerance. How would you respond you to know, that? The point is that first address that issue. Either you deny that the president is having a, a misconception of reality, that all these other people who have not done anything else except condemn so it. So what do you want the government to do? Well, I am not interested in what the government do, okay. quite frankly. What we want is the people should be alert and alive to the growing dangers of intolerance, okay. of loss of social harmony. Okay. And it is for the people to take a decision. Who are we to decide what the government should do and who are we to decide really what the people should do? It is the people who decide. So it's clearly an ideological war. But you know, again, on the man on the street and the kind of comments which are coming on the Facebook, it seems that the entire event or the entire uh, uh, episode has been trivialized. People call it, uh, you know, give it examples of a lemon spoon race, which is which is there. People not returning the cash prize, but returning only the mementos. Uh, That's not true. That's not true. Most of us have returned the cash also. That's not true. But but some of them have only returned the mementos. That's what I, ha I, I have no idea because this is no uh, concerted or uh, action. It is not uh, an action in which mutual consultation took place at all. And, and, and there is another perception that, you know, it's like uh, like the actors, like the politicians, yes. the writers are also grabbing in that breaking news moment to give them the publicity. That is another perception which is... Well, you see, the point is that if you do something like this, you are bound to attract attention. Okay. Our issue is, our, our attempt is not to attract attention to ourselves. We are lonely people. So you would people. concede that if you had done this silently, it would not have got registered? Yes, that's right. So it was a dramatic moment yes. for so the writers. we chose that dramatic action of okay. returning the award. Okay. Yes. But uh, 
when Salman Rushdie's book was banned, it was a Congress uh, government. When Taslima Nasreen was hounded, it was a Congress government. Many people say that the entire idea of freedom of expression is very selective. It is centered around one particular group. Would you, would you really agree to that? No, I don't think so. For example, so. M.F. Hussain's paintings, when they, you know, they alluded to perverse paintings of Hindu gods and goddesses, not that kind of an outcry was seen. No, we met the, pre the Home Minister. Okay. We gave us a, a petition to the uh, President uh, requesting more than a hundred people from all over the country have signed it which did not which included not merely painters and art people but also writers and such others asking that the government of India should confer Bharat Ratna on him. Okay. I as the chairman of the Lalit Kala Academy nominated an exiled M.F. Hussain on the executive board of the Lalit Kala Academy. So we did. This is you know this again Without looking into what we have been doing earlier, you think that there is a bandwagon. 500 scientists, these scientists need the state uh, governments and the government aid much more than we do. But uh, uh, Mr. Vajpayee, in what we have seen in the past, no revolt or no rebellion, you know, is, is, is successful without any kind of political patronage, at least for a layman, it's hard to believe. Now, for example, uh, we saw artists, writers, historians coming out in huge numbers, they've returned their awards. Then we see a principal opposition party like Congress, Sonia Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi meeting the president and holding an, in an intolerance march. Then you have another build-up uh, event coming up where the writers and you, they'll go in for a concerted action to strengthen the core values of the nation, where all the artists and the writers again will be, uh, will be called on one, on one platform. So is it, I mean, people would question the timing, the people would question the kind of build-up which is seen. Is it well, not natural well, I mean, on the part of the I government mean, is, to, to question? How can you stop all this from happening okay. in an open democracy, which luckily we happen to be and continue to be, okay. this will all happen. Okay. It is not in your hands that you, can you ask a political party not to do this thing? Can you ask anybody? No. They would take advantage sometimes and understandably so. We the artistic community, the reflective community, we may have different political points of view and yet we are on these issues together. But, this is all. But without any offence uh, meant to you, Mr. Vajpayee, how people perceive you? I mean, uh, if you talk to the BJP leaders and you talk to the people in the government, they will perceive you as someone who was very close to Arjun Singh, yeah. you got your award. Maybe they would perceive it as a, as a service, as, as, as an award for the service you've given. So. I in was given an award, the highest award given for Indian poetry in Madhya Pradesh by a BJP government. Okay. So, uh, the, the, these kinds of absurd uh, uh, notions, what service I rendered to Mr. Arjun Singh, after all, I was a civil servant. I was part of the government and it so happened that the political uh, uh, setup there was the Congress. So you government. don't see it as a well orchestrated and a well calibrated thought out strategy to, uh, to build up an anti-Modi sentiment in the country? I don't think so. We are not interested in creating okay, any. I take that point. On this point, we take a break. On the other side, we talk about the autonomy of the cultural academies in the country. Back in a moment. Welcome back. You're watching To The Point with Ashok Vajpayee. Uh, Mr. Vajpayee, what I want to understand from you now is that uh, an academy like Sahit Academy is supposed to be an autonomous academy, but the concerns of the writers are purely political. Purely political. So do you see uh, some no, kind of I a don't, dichotomy there? I don't agree there. with that, political, because okay. you are using the term very freely, incidentally. You're calling almost everything political. So in a certain sense, in a democracy, from citizenship to religion, everything is political. This can't be, a, this is a hugely unacceptable simplification. I don't think the demand of okay. the writers or the anxiety of the writers is basically political, unless you think that the concern for society, the concerns of uh, tradition, the concern for the pluralistic character of this country, these are basically political. But I would put it to you, they are basically spiritual. Okay. So please don't use the word so freely for everything. 
but you know why i'm forced to ask you is that because the entire politics of the country now seems to be revolving around uh, the, the 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 way the manner in which the awards have been returned the manner in which the political parties are 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 actually spearheading the discourse in the country the way media is taking it up uh, so please, suddenly a big event please all the look at all the editorials that have come in the major newspapers of this country yes some of them have questioned the award um, returning phenomena which they have every right to and there are any number of writers who have not returned the awards so there is a large body of people who do empathize with the issues that we have raised okay. agree with the concerns that we have voiced do not agree with the act of returning of the awards and we have no reason to believe that they are any the less uh, important or creative or less political in your terms than us and since you've already said that you know it's it's a symbolic protest so obviously there's going to be no meeting ground between the writers or the or the artists association and the government but let's let's move away a little now and talk in about in fact there is no association in this country uh, of of writers of those kind whatever association there are they are mainly ideological formations and most of us writers are outside it and it's an ideological war which people are talking about but i i don't want to get into the details of that now let's let's talk about uh, the functioning of the ac academies yes. now that the writers have returned their awards and many of them have returned their mementos along with the cash prize uh, the 61 year old academy of letters is is just completely clueless how does it tackle this situation because we have we have addressed this issue day before yesterday we have addressed an open letter to them okay that having asserted that you are independent and autonomous please act on it and reinvent yourself you have been alienated from the creative community you have been alienated from the creative readership you have been alienated from reflective people connect with them it could be a long term process and your and your letter is addressed to the chairman yes so which means that the chairman is he is he active or proactive or he doesn't want to say anything he doesn't want to com commit well, anything we have i have we haven't heard from them so okay. can, we cannot uh we cannot presume their reaction because in the past we heard writers saying that you know the chairman is not taking any stand on mm kalburgi's no, but, but, uh, murder but but that's true that's what we agitated against but belatedly the academy has taken a stand okay and in keeping with what they have asserted we have only requested the academy to reinvent itself to show how their autonomy and independence are going to function but when you say reinventing an academy like sahit academy you yourself have been a bureaucrat a working bureaucrat then who joined uh, lalita kala academy uh, how have you really perceived the situation is it really a difficult task to maintain the autonomy because people keep saying people do talk about the fact that government officials or the ministers they do put up a lot of That's pressure bad. no no i i i would put put the record straight i was chairman lalit kala academy for years i did not have a moment of interference okay one right two yes government officials are represented on these bodies but they do not necessarily play a decisive role two three actually the autonomy of the uh of the of the academies is more freely and irresponsibly right. and incompetently enjoyed by their permanent bureaucracy mm -hmm. now you have academies in which there are people at uh, levels somebody who has been risen to be a uh, secretary is was a clerk somebody who has had no interest and no expertise in modern art or contemporary art is is the secretary somebody against whom there are huge charges so you're hinting on the fact that the non deserving people are sitting at important posts yes and, and that that is not that is not the doing of this particular government right that is not the doing of this particular government although this particular government is now interfering by putting people for instance the secretary has been reinstated against whom there are 18 charges okay. made by three successive chairmen but you know the general council of the sahit academy was constituted in 2013 during upa regime yes and uh, the 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 the, the entire tenure the upa regime had nothing to do no, with the formation no 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 i want to ask you about on a, on a different topic and the tenure ends in 2017 so there are yeah. a lot of posts now which are lying vacant how does the academy resolve this crisis there are a lot of uh, posts which are lying vacant how do, how does one deal with this you situation see, like this if it acts candidly and autonomously 
it can be resolved. Bring professional, whatever the requirements. Okay. And do not allow the government to interfere. I don't know whether the government is wanting to interfere. Mm -hmm. That will be too much of a presumption to make. But you know, various uh, parliamentary committees and uh, uh, the standing, the various parliamentary panels, they have hit out at the functioning of the academies and they have referred uh, to the fact that, you know, the books and the awards, they are all rigged, they are pre-decided and uh, the translations of uh, various books, they are not transparent, the way the awards are being given. And Sita Ram Yachuri in one of his uh, panel reports also mentioned uh, to a phrase like vulture cultures. What, to which group of people has he really referred to? No, the, this is true. I, if, I, the I, if the autonomy is not, uh, is, is not, you see, has not, not been saying tinkered. The autonomy is being irresponsibly and incompetently and conspiratorially exercised okay. by those who come to power in cohort with the permanent bureaucracy of these academies. So okay. something more drastic has to be done. And I'm sure these reports do contain suggestions how to restructure them. All the three academies need restructuring. And they need restructuring both because of what they have not been able to achieve and two, because of the changed circumstances. When you say change in circumstances, obviously they have not evolved with the time. That's, yes, that's very that's, clear because yeah. as you say, the art gallery, the various uh, forums which have evolved. But these bodies, they look very redundant. They look old style. Yeah. Uh, but is there a political will to reinvent these academies at all? I have no idea. I have no idea. There has been a lack of political will for a long time. Okay. That's true. And not merely of the present uh, formation, but even earlier. The, the desire to reinvent or restructure them has been very low and lean. The Huxar Committee report of 1989, it had suggested that the president of the Sahitya Academy should be appointed by the president, but the general council members, they had rejected the idea saying that no, it will be, uh, it will be selected by the council members. So basically, the, there, is, there is reluctance from within the academy. This is a clear example. No, no, no. That, that, that was done to prevent the government from having anything to do with the appointment of the chairman. Okay. One may agree or disagree with that uh, okay. position, but it is not because uh, there was any attempt. Uh, this was not to allow the government to interfere. Okay. That was the intention at that time, as far as I recall, because my friend, you are Anantamurti, was the chairman when this resolution was passed by the uh, General Council. We are towards the last lap of our interview. Now, let me quote a book of uh, Shovan Chaudhary, Competent Authority, where he uses a phrase that we are living in an age of anti-intellectualism. Mm. Do you really believe that in times like these, when, when so much of talk about returning awards, writers uh, turning hostile against the political system, uh, are we really in an age of anti-intellectualism? I don't know whether we are, although intellect is being held in low esteem okay. uh, all over. But let me give you an example from Mahabharat. Okay. Bhishma Pitama on his Shar Shaiya tells what is Raj Dharma and he says Raj Dharma is that all the intellectuals in the Raj must be respected by the Raja okay. and he should not allow fools and um, uh, people with greed to be in the, in the, in the regime and he says Primarily, he should protect the people from any kind of fear. But uh, all of a sudden, Mr. Vajpayee, we see that freedom of expression has become a burning topic of, of the country. Uh, majorly because we see that the intellectual class is, is in a political conflict with the government of the day, for whatever reasons you have uh, given us. But is it majorly because of the popularity of the social media that it has become so virulent, it has become so vocal? Is it basically because of the social media? I don't think so. Okay. I don't think the social media can possibly uh, govern uh, the social space okay. completely. Thank you so much, Mr. Vajpayee, for coming on To The Point. Thank you. So that's it on this episode of To The Point. See you next time with another personality. Goodbye and thanks for watching.